let me kind of take the last couple of minutes, last six or seven, ten minutes, and just end with immunotherapy for triple negative breast cancer. And I just like kind of kind of get. I'll start with Carlos. I mean, we have some initial studies with immunotherapy. What are your thoughts so far? Well, my thoughts about immunotherapy is that we 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 have we have some signals that it may work in a subgroup of triple negative breast cancers. I'm thinking of the study reported by Rita Nanda and published in JCO with pembrolizumab, which is a PDL1 inhibitor that releases a checkpoint that uh, again by that release allows T cells to to uh, induce tumor cell uh, death. Uh, again, there was about a 20% response rate. <coughs> There's a more uh, recent uh, study that's going to be presented tomorrow that was a lot less impressive. My sense overall is that um, there is a subgroup of triple negative breast cancer that probably benefit from these drugs, but we need to do a better effort in identifying who they are. It's not going to be like melanoma or it can lung be. or non-small cell and, lung where we and really the, have the it. The mutational load, uh, the neoantigen load in these tumors is already telling you that. Right. Okay, there's a subgroup that maybe looks like melanoma, but it's a minority. PD-1, PDL1 staining is not really the biomarker we need. We need more than that. So I think that, um, so I think that I am, I'm skeptical at this point, and I would like to see more conversation between cancer immunologists and immunotherapists to try to do a better, to do, come up with better combinations, but try better selectors of, of those tr treatments that are tumors that are likely to respond. Yeah. Well, we're, we're very interested in uh, trying to make, as they say, cold tumors hot. So using things like toll-like receptors, OX40 agonists, and other things that will make the tumor more immunogenic. Because it's clear that as it stands now with monotherapy with checkpoint inhibitors, uh, only a minority are responding. Now, now, granted, some of these responses are long-lived. And Rita Nanda's follow-up right. uh, presentation of the keynote study, the phase 1B study, uh, there were some two-year responders. But it's, again, it's a very small subset. The other question I had is, how, I mean, I don't think it's that positive. I was just thinking about this a few days ago. How much breast cancer has MSI deficiency? Does any? Is breast cancer? Yeah, one to three percent, it's low. But it's MSI. there, though. But it is there. It's, it's, it's low, low. yeah. yeah. But one to three percent. could that be something? I think it's probably sure. too low for people to really Well, there is an, an approval now, you there know. Is. Pembrolizumab an approval is approved for yeah. MSI. Yes, of any, so you had the Luis Diaz study yeah. that led to the approval that is fascinating sure. because it's the first approval that is based on a non disease basis rather right. on MSI. Tumor agnostic. I think there is something there. I think that we are not there in understanding all the determinants. For example, in triple negative breast cancer, the role of TILs. Uh, right. appears to be very important. You have all these German studies, the mm -hmm. Gepard, uh, Sexto, I think it is, that shows that if you have lymphocytes in the tumor, uh, you have a much better outcome. So I think that we need to learn what's happening. To me, there is enough of a signal that there is something there. Remember, the first Herceptin paper that was co-authored by Debu and myself. It's 12%. 12%. Right? 12%. Um, and I remember that when we presented the first time, people, uh, I mean, there was one person that stand up and said, why are you guys so excited about this? Was it that, was it a particular, <laughs> was that Sitkovic? We shouldn't say it. No, no it was not. We, we, we we'll say, say it. We're, this is a no, public it was forum. Not, we can't it was, say that. It was not a person from the North American continent. And, <laughs> the, and, 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 and by the way, it was a right comment. Because, but there was a signal, so I think that we are in the same situation yeah. here. We need to understand what are the terms of response. And my hope and optimism for this space comes from that the large randomized phase three studies, in particular the keynote, I wasn't involved in the first line study, required biopsies to go on the study. So even if they, mm. uh, you know, to, to they required PDL1 um, expression, or at least you had to that submit the sample, and I think with that, we should be able to tease out who really might derive benefit. I just I mean, hope we know the questions to ask of those samples. Yeah. I just don't know if we know the questions yet, the proper questions. I mean, it's great we got it, and I think at some point we'll know, but do we really know the right questions to be well, asked? I think, I think we begin to do. I think the point that um, they was mentioning about hot and cold, right. I mean, we can determine the mutational load, so that's going to be important, but most importantly, we can determine the interferon response signatures, you know, are those T cells engage or not, and we are beginning to develop assays. So there's some signatures as well as uh, uh, multiplex assays. Yeah, there are right. some signatures. And no, no, it's supposed to be IDO inhibitors that are trying to signal yeah. T cells. There's a lot of stuff out there that may not yeah. be applicable to breast. But there's also a therapy that, you know, also may work, involves tumor cell non-autonomous mechanisms. The host is a big determinant. Right, right, very big determinant. So, for example, it may well be that these therapies are absolutely wonderful in that micrometastatic uh, disease after neoadjuvant therapy, for example, but not in the 
So I don't know of any other therapies that where the host is, can be such an important determinant. Right. Right? No, I agree. And I think the host is very complicated. So it's extraordinary. <laughs> we're, 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 so we're, are all we're, of us. We're, we're <laughs> no, 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 seriously, I mean, I think that we're it's something that we talk about the genomics of the tumor, <laughs> all the genetics of the tumor. We yeah. really haven't. It's a whole other area, the genetics of the host and the host yeah. response. Well, and there's data in, mel sort of in melanoma that the micro, the gut microbiome right. is yeah. 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 all of this yeah. stuff yeah. that we're just starting to scratch so, the surface. Yeah. So, yeah. There's the host, yeah. a yeah. difference. Well, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, a place to end on here. I think on, it's great. On the gut microbiome? On gut microbiome. Yeah, that's no, just great. On the general of where we're going, and I think that we're really starting to think with immunotherapy that the host is going to be important. I think that we're starting to really get into the host and host factors and the host microenvironment. Yeah. Do, do um, you want to make any comments about immunoconjugates? Yeah, I would. Let's just talk a little briefly, bit about cytosine. I think that's an exciting area. Sure, Debbie, do you want to talk about that? Denise, do you guys have any comments about it? Yeah, I've worked with um, glenbutumumab, and um, so I think, you know, for triple negative, there are at least two exciting compounds on the horizon that are drug antibody conjugates, and I think all of us are excited um, based on our experience with TDM, you know. Uh, there are different um, compounds, and I think the uh, trope 2, the sacotumumab, you know, has gotten recognition from the FDA and is moving into a phase 3 right. trial now. Um, and it's interesting because trope 2 is a lot more prevalent in that triple negative population. It's like 50 percent, 49 percent. Yeah, so they don't, they're not testing in that particular trial um, as they move forward. Glematumumab, uh, we looked at in an all-comer breast trial, the eMERGE trial, and the signal for benefit from that drug antibody conjugate that's targeting the GPNMB um, receptor on triple ne it, it was most prevalent on triple negatives. And, and from that trial, it was about 30, 40. What we're seeing with the current trial metric um, is in excess of 50 percent. Um, so that trial is actually selecting patients. You have to have greater than 25 percent in the tumor, and that is at the time of metastatic disease. And how many patients do you have to screen? Three, to um, so that one that you're screening almost um, 10 patients to get six or seven. So it's about 60 percent. So yeah, well, it's, a lot, it's a lot higher in the metric trial. Than I thought. Yeah. Um, so it's about to close. It's a 300 phase two randomized trial that went up against CAPE cytobine. So um, not physician choice against CAPE. Then. It was against CAPE and uh -huh. so that will close. And that's I think very interesting to see the signal um, because there is a signal in melanoma with glematumumab. Um, that's been very active and in melanoma um, the correlate is the rash so the patients that get the rash tend to have the highest response in melanoma. What's the mechanism for the rash? They're not sure. They're not sure. It's is not as prevalent. The they think in melanoma but it's been less in the breast patients and we don't know if that's going to be a signal in the breast population. Um, so but we do see it. Right. But we, we do see it. It, it does. You're in the trial yeah. too. You mm -hmm. Yeah. This. And so, you know, in, in melanoma there, I think their next trial is actually, th they had about an all-comer 11% response rate after checkpoint inhibitors. The rash patients, it doubled to about 20%. So now they're moving forward with a combination with a checkpoint inhibitor um, and glomatumumab. Okay. And the breast trial, I think we'd ha we'll have data first quarter 2018. That'd be great. We really need to see.